and attempt the diagnosis. Case one was 30 year old female with vaginal discharge. This case has three pictures. In the center, the organ is, uh, it gives some resemblance to the picture shown in the right side of insect. This is another picture of the same case. Again, the insect picture gives some resemblance to the diagnosis. This is another picture of case one. The insect picture again is a clue to the diagnosis. <coughs> Case 2 was 35 year old female with vaginal discharge. The organisms shown on the left side of the picture have resemblance to all the three pictures shown on the right side. This is another picture of the same case and the organism has some resemblance to the picture shown in the left side of insect. Case 3 was 20 year old female with vaginal discharge. The organism is indicated by red arrow. This is another picture of the same case. The inset on the left side is again a clue to the diagnosis. <clears throat> case 4 is 25 year old female with fishy odor vaginal discharge. The inset picture is again a clue to the diagnosis. Case 5 was 30 year old female with genital blisters. Case 6 was 40 year old female with cervical erosion. And case 7 was 25 year old female with cervical growth. Both the picture in the insets are again a clue to the diagnosis. <coughs> So coming uh, on to my lecture, the term infection was replaced by organism in the 2001 Bethesda system for reporting cervical cytology because mere presence of organism does not always indicate clinical infection and clinical management is guided by sign and symptom in most cases. Although identification of organism is not the primary aim of PAP test, it is an added benefit that can be helpful clinically. In Bethesda system, the organism came under the category of negative for intraepithelial lesion or malignancies. These organisms are Trichomonas vaginalis, Candida, Bacterial vaginosis, Actinomyces, HSV, and CMV. The cervical cytology has relatively high specificity for most of these organisms although a confirmatory test is often merited. Nowadays, LBC vials are routinely used for both morphology and microbiologic testing like Neisseria gonori, Chlamydia trachomatis, and high-risk HPV. The first organism is Trichomonas vaginalis. It is one of the most common curable sexually transmitted disease usually seen in young females, but can also occur in males leading to urethritis or prostatitis. Though males are usually asymptomatic, the females usually present with frothy, greenish-yellow, strongly malodorous discharge associated with intense itching. The symptoms appear within 5 to 28 days of exposure. The vaginal and the cervical wall are congested with punctate hemorrhage resulting in strawberry appearance. The organism is 15 to 30 micron in size and it is oval to pear, angulated to kite in shape, having a thin elliptical pale, eccentrically placed nucleus, cyanophilic to gray cytoplasm, having eosinophilic granules. These organisms has been shown by green arrow in the picture. The flagella may be seen sometimes in the smear. A large filamentous bacteria known as leptothrix as indicated by purple arrow if present in the smear warrant for the search of trichomonas vaginalis. All the reverse or the same is not true. A clue to the diagnosis of trichomonas vaginalis is an aggregate of polymorph aggregate as shown in the picture by red arrow 
it is known as volleyballs pass balls or cannon balls the trick change in the squamous epithelial cells uh, can be seen in the form of mild enlargement of the nucleus and a small indistinct perinuclear halo in lbc the trichomonas vaginalis appear smaller rounder and with more prominent nucleus granules and flagellas in sure path lbcs the trichomonas appear kite shaped in appearance the next organism is candida it is very common during pregnancy and is associated with change in vaginal glycogen flora or ph the risk factors are immunosuppression diabetes mellitus debilitating illness steroid broad spectrum antibiotics chemotherapy alkaline douches which disrupt the normal vaginal flora leading to proliferation of candida patient present with a non malodorous thick white cheesy discharge associated with itching the mucosa is red and inflamed the organism is eosinophilic to gray brown in color and it exists in the form of pseudo hyphae and budding yeast giving a stick and stone appearance and also resemble to spaghetti and meatballs and balloon dogs the hyphae show uh, a septate the hyphae are a septate and show constriction giving a resemblance to strings of sausages in lbc smears the squamous epithelial cells are arranged in linear array and they are pierced by pseudo hyphae and they can be seen in the form of a roulet and this give a appearance of shish kebab the most common species is candida albicans which can be seen both in yeast and pseudo hyphae form the next infection is bacterial vaginosis bacterial vaginosis is most common cause of abnormal vaginal discharge in child bearing age and it is associated with pid preterm birth and post op gynae infection it represents a shift in vaginal flora from lactobacilli to polymicrobial syndrome involving many obligate and facultative anaerobic bacteria most commonly gardnerella vaginalis peptostreptococci bacteroids and mobilincus the clinical diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis is made if three out of four signs are present number 1 thin gray white vaginal discharge with fishy or ammonia like odor two positive whiff test when 10% koh is added to the discharge a means are released giving a fishy odor three a vaginal ph of more than 4.5 because of lack of lactobacilli and four presence of clue cells as shown in the picture with green arrow the clue cells appear when there is raise in the vaginal ph the gardnerella vaginalis which is a small coma shaped coco bacilli they stick to the squamous epithelium cells like a velvety coat and obscure the cell margin giving a chagra appearance in conventional smear the background show many cocci giving a filmy or sandy appearance as shown in the picture with the red arrow in lbc the background is usually clean the next infection is actinomycosis actinomycosis of female genital tract is rare as actinomyces is rarely usually cause superficial colonization rather than invasive infection it is a normal flora in mouth and bowel and may go to vagina by urogenital contacts and with multiple sexual partners the risk of this infection increases with prolonged use of iods especially the copper iods chronic endometritis and forgotten foreign bodies like pessaries and tampons patients are usually asymptomatic or they may have malodorous brownish discharge pain if present usually indicate pid or invasive infection actinomyces is a gram positive non acid fast acute angle branching delicate filamentous bacteria living symbiotically with bacterial colonies forming a characteristic fuzzy dark blue mass 
which can have resemblance to cotton balls, woolly balls, or bottle brush or dust bunnies. Many neutrophils adhere to swollen filaments at the periphery like clubs. In elements, in LBC, the filaments, they appear more fine and delicate with less polymorphonuclear cells in the background. Next infection is herpes simplex virus. Herpetic means to creep or serpentine. We cannot distinguish HSV type 1 or 2 on pap smear. Cytology smears show characteristic nuclear changes. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize for my cough. I was uh, speaking about herpes simplex virus. The cytology smear show characteristic nuclear changes in the infected epithelial cells signified by three M's. Large multinucleated cells with molded nuclei and margination of chromatin giving thickened nuclear membrane. The nuclei have ground glass appearance due to presence of viral particles. Though seen in less than 50% of cases, Eosinophilic intranuclear inclusion surrounded by a halo is tightly characteristic and indicate a impending cell death. I'm sorry, one may also see uh, mononucleated infected cells with characteristic nuclear features. The next infection is cytomegalovirus. Though serological evidence of CMV is common, it is rarely seen in pap smear. Most commonly seen in immunocompromised individuals uh, and it affects usually endocervical cells, though it can also be seen in the stromal cells. The characteristic cells are sparse, showing cellular and nuclear enlargement. A large eosinophilic intranuclear viral inclusion surrounded by a prominent halo give a owl eye appearance. A small cytoplasmic basophilic inclusions may also be present. One may also see multinucleation, but usually there is no nuclear molding as, as compared to herpes simplex virus. Next is granulomatous cervicitis, uh, which we come across a few times in our practice. Uh, there are various causes of uh, granulomas of cervix, ranging from tuberculosis, chlamydia, granuloma inguinal, syphilis, foreign body, post-radiation or surgery, and it can occur as a reaction to squamous cell carcinoma. In developing countries, the most common cause is tuberculous cervicitis, which commonly occurs secondary to tuberculous salpingitis. In tuberculosis, the smears show epithelioid cell granulomas with characteristic slipper-shaped nuclei and with giant cells. Smear uh, can be the diagnosis can be confirmed with the help of ZN stain, which show many acid fast bacilli, or the diagnosis may also be confirmed with the help of PCR or culture for the acid fast bacilli. Now, coming to the answers for the slides shown in the beginning of my talk, case one was showing uh, organism. It is a pseudo hyphae which is piercing the squamous epithelial cells, giving a shish kebab appearance. This picture is showing pseudo hyphae and many yeast form, giving us appearance of spaghetti and meatballs. This picture also shows pseudo hyphae and many yeast form, resembling a balloon dog. So, the diagnosis of the case one was candidiasis. Case 2, on the left side, uh, we can see a blue tangled mass of thin filamentous uh, bacteria uh, called actinomyces and it gives some resemblance to woolly balls and dust bunnies. This picture, uh, in this picture, the colony of actinomyces is resembling to the bottle brush. So, diagnosis was actinomycosis and this patient was a IOD user. In case 3, uh, you can see that there are various uh, trichomonas vaginalis which are sticking on the surface of squamous epithelial cells. 
This is the picture of the same case. You may see many kite-shaped angulated trichomonas vaginalis feeding on the squamous epithelial cells. And this appearance is resembling to the pizza topping. So the diagnosis of the case was trichomonas vaginalis. Case 4 was a fishy order vaginal discharge. In the center, you may see many clue cells and uh, the cocoa bacilli, they are sticking onto the squamous epithelial cells and uh, having the resemblance to Shagrat. This case 5 had genital blister. In the center, uh, one may see a large squamous epithelial cells, multinucleation. There is molding of the nuclei. There is margination of chromatin. And we can see ground glass uh, nuclei with a perinuclear halo. So this was a case of herpes simplex virus. Case 6 uh, was a female with cervical erosion. You can see uh, mature squamous epithelial cells showing enlargement of the nuclei on the right side, which is more than three times the nucleus of a adjacent uh, intermediate cell nuclei. The nucleus is hyperchromatic with showing nuclear uh, irregularity. And we can see a large, uh, well-defined perinuclear halo. At the periphery, one may see a thin rim of condensed cytoplasm. So this change is known as a colocyte, which occurs significantly to human papilloma virus infection, leading to L-cell. So uh, this uh, LCL will be taken up uh, after my lecture by Dr. Bijal Shah. This uh, case 7 uh, female had a cervical growth. One may see on the left side of the picture that there are many epithelioid cells having moderate amount of cytoplasm and characteristic slipper-shaped nuclei. On the right side, one may see giant cell, Langen's type of giant cell, giving a resemblance to horseshoe. And the diagnosis of tubercular cervicitis was confirmed on Zedenstein as it was showing many uh, acid-fast bacilli. These are my references uh, for the talk.